Latino or brown? What your favorite com- minority comic book artist that you a comic book not artist characters. Comic book, characters anybody you you like or somebody who you think has been an inspiration to you? And I'm kind of interested to hear who who's well, you know some people I know with their <laughs> character is gonna be and it's just like yeah no sh- no shock to that uh, one and like um. So you know what I'm gonna let it I'm getting on. I'm gonna let it start off with Jarrell. Tell no, me your favorite. Tell me your favorite character. I mean, it's you know, it, it's funny that you say that though because like my favorite black you know like superhero character is Static. Is it because he has the same hair? No, no. It was just that at the time, you know, it's funny. Like there are a lot of kids who thought I was Static at Comic Con. Oh wow. I, yeah, because I had I had on like a blue like a blue jacket, you know, like I had I, I, I had the headband and the lots. I was just like, no, nah, like, should have just be like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, but no, but the funny thing is, at the time, that was really he was it though. Like he was the only he was the only one, you know, until Justice League came out, and then I discovered John Stewart, you know. But mm. it's it's weird because like now, like if you were to ask me back then, it would have just been like static hands down. But nowadays, there's actually more people because I like Black Lightning. You know, mm. you know, I like Black Panther. I'm a big fan of Icon and Rocket, you know, and like and that was never a thing before. And yeah. you know, what's funny. Icon and Rocket came from Milestone, which was yeah. Yeah. with yeah. yeah. DC tried to put out mainly an all black comic line. book line. And I and Static, Icon, Rocket were the ones that survived. Yeah. yeah. That mm-hmm. whole thing. Like a lot of the look, if anybody gets a chance, you can. I know when we went to a con, they had a black panel which talked about black con- like which talked about milestone and they actually gave out a bunch of the free comic books from milestone like mm-hmm. some of the prints that were like in a warehouse and no this is nobody bought and that's a, that's another big example of not supporting yeah your we, your black we, you know nowadays we want to act woke and we yeah, want to yeah. talk about supporting, supporting black black artists or whatever this is the time when milestone yep. came out nobody supported that there mm-hmm. were a lot of comic books to put out and the only ones to survive that were Icon, Static, Rocket. Mm-hmm. I think there was like one more like gear, hardware. Yeah, yeah these these are the only com- the characters that survived it that were integrated into the mm-hmm. DC universe. And look how popular they are right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, Augustus Freeman the Fourth, like the the story of Icon, because to say that you know he came from slavery times mm-hmm. and he took the image, you know, because when he when he landed on this earth, like it was around slavery, and he took the image of a black person because that was the first person that he saw, and then it's like every one hundred years he just puts a new number in front of his name. You know, he's been Augustus Freeman the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and because he doesn't he doesn't age, like he just he looks exactly the same, and like you said earlier, he's kind of like the black Superman. Mm. You know? They they do him like no 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 pun intended but they do him justice in Young Justice the cartoon, <laughs> you know the rock the rocket character as well like Aqualad you know he he became black yeah you know so we we got Calderon now and yeah. they're they're popping they're popping out of the woodworks like you know like Thunder and Lightning on Black Lightning TV show like they're extremely popular yeah you know like like Vixen like CW did a yeah, Vixen on the, um, yeah the, the animated yeah shorts. they did a Vixen animated oh, yeah, series I was bring up Vixen. yeah and but the the Vixen animated series it tied in to the actual live yeah, action because yeah. she showed up in Arrow right? yeah she popped up on an episode yeah. of Arrow and then you know she was also on Legends of Tomorrow and then. They, they they did Grandma Vixen on Legends of Tomorrow when they went to 1944 and they pulled her out of there. Why was she not in Crisis? I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the actor, well, the actor had something else to do. But yeah, I think a lot of characters don't pop up in um, Crisis, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of TV shows, mm-hmm. and I think it's this should be a testament to how far we've come. Yeah, um, and I'm not just talking about black people in general or Latin, Latino people, or anybody else. Everybody. You know, the LBGTQ community, how far they have come. They would never, you know, if you want to think about it, in comic books, when would you have um, had a gay character yeah. that was shown on, like, out? I mean, I remember one of the first things that I saw was uh, mm-hmm. they had one of the X-Men. It was a big comic where one of the X-Men was getting married to to his partner, and I forgot what the name what the character was, and I, I do apologize to anybody out there like, come on, you're going to bring them up? You don't even talk about another <laughs> name. No, but there were, um, there's a lot of characters Is that in the 90s? Oh, uh, no, this is 2000s. Um, Wait, not Iceman, right? No, they, no, no. No, uh, but see, I think that whole Iceman tobacco was I just I don't like to, when, they, when they switch to yeah. just fit a niche, Yeah, that like, makes sense. I think yeah. It didn't, 
when they explained it, it What's got that? better. I'm about to give it to you. I'm about to give you. The and that's, a, that's another thing. Like remember, back oh North Star, North Star, yeah. yeah. There you go. When he got married to his partner, but the Iceman thing, they kind of explained it that young Bobby Drake was confused about his sexuality. But the one that we know in this modern day age, he kind of like, he found himself. So he knew what, I'm pretty sure they would kind of like label him more as bisexual. And mm. he kind of found his niche. He knew what he wanted because I have plenty of, uh, when they were X Factor, like he was uh, in love with different women. So it's like, I can kind of understand that like young Bobby Drake from the time when the X-Men first started he was confused about his sexuality, so he didn't want to come out to anybody that he was gay. Mm. Um, as he grew older, he got more, you know, worldly. He found out what he wanted, and, you know, he just pick and chose. And I think um, that's what you do. You live life, and you figure out what you mm. want to do. But I do think they should have, like, characters that are just strictly, like, North Star was a character. Shockingly enough, a brutal character, Midnighter. <laughs> you know, you find out, you know, uh, most of the way through that comic, you know, he's gay. And also one of uh, Wolverine's children. Uh, what's his name? Um, somebody help me out here because this is terrible for me being a Marvel person. And I can't Damn. remember. I can't remember. And I can't remember, you know, because there's so many things on your mind. You're trying to bring it um, out. Um, Wolverine's son. Oh, Wolverine's son. Give me yeah, a second. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up and we're not name. talking about Thomas Hewlett. We're not uh, talking about Dakin. Dakin, thank you. Um, Dakin is a gay character. And I think it's more the way they explained it was that since he's part wolf or animal or wherever it is, that he really has no sexuality. He just chose what he liked and what he wanted to do. But these are characters that are out there that people, you know, and, I, and I'm happy that the combo community has support of that. Mm -hmm. That they're not sitting there going, oh, I, I can't imagine my hero being gay. I mean, they're, they're there. They're on... They're on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you and, and on YouTube, making videos every damn yeah. week, taking off on it. But yeah, yeah, I mean, no. you can't imagine that character being gay, yeah. but think about a character, someone who is gay, and they're thinking about, you know, I don't have any representation. Is this well, that's my, that's my thing, though. Like, I feel like th these characters do exist, and it's yeah. just like, you need to support those characters. Like, exactly. I feel like it's lazy and cheap of Marvel and DC to be like, oh, let's just make um, Iron Man, let's make the next Iron Man Iron Asian Heart, yeah. with a broken leg and yeah. gay. And it's, it's just like, I feel like that's lazy to use mainstream titles unless you do it correctly. Like yes. uh, make uh, a separate character like Miles Morales, a Spider-Verse. Yes. Yes. That makes total sense. It's not lazy, but well, like, that's why I, I, don't I, do it lazy. Um, yeah. Uh, lazy diversity. writing. And yeah, that's why I agree with the Batwoman choice. Mm. You know, because well, it's entirely new character. Yeah, like they didn't yes. they, they didn't they didn't just get a new Ruby Rose. They were just like, well, if she quit, we'll just get a brand new complete person and, just to be the new Batwoman. And that's why exactly. I don't really support um when what Hollywood's doing. The, like Hollywood Hollywood's version of pushing for diversity is not really pushing for diversity because mm. you for for me just watching on end, you just gender swapping and yep, or race swapping is just. First of all, it's an insult to the people that you're pandering to yeah, yeah. because yep. this show, like Nadia just said, it's lazy. You're telling me that you're not, you're not taking the time yeah. to write thoughtful to find out first, hire people, and that have them write are, can yeah. represent it and write it properly. exactly and write a, a original story driven characters and just give them the budget to yeah. do it in the mm -hmm. budget and the marketing yeah. of the machine. Instead, what you want to do is that you want to rally up the original fans by race swamping, gender swapping, sexuality yeah. swamping, and then call those people, oh you're oh you're not supporting us uh swamping this character. <laughs> yeah. You're 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 racist, you're this, you're yeah. that. But the reason why those people are mad is because you're doing exactly yeah. you're you're pandering and you're not giving uh the people of those said mm -hmm. communities original stories or giving them the budget to make those original stories. See, cause, so. cause one, one of the issues that, that also came up, I don't, I don't, I don't know if all of you watch young justice, but there was a lot of um controversy when Calderon, like when Aqualad, you found oh, out that he was, yeah, yeah. he was, he was bisexual. Like, I, we're we're going to say bisexual, but yeah. I mean, it was like, it was this whole uproar where people were just like, like people were upset by it. And then mm. people were just like, Oh, what's wrong with him being gay? And I'm like, the point was, because I, I was one of the people who was mad, not so much because he was gay, but like y'all were saying, the writing like the writing pissed me off. Because you literally spent the first two seasons 
having him pi- like like pine over a exactly. woman, like a woman. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. he, he he was all about Aqua Girl. He loved Aqua Girl. He was mad because his whole arc was all yeah. His, right? the, the, his entire season two arc was the fact that he was mad that she died. You know, and then he was about to kill everybody because he loved her so much. There was nothing about his character. And you know, in Young Justice, they jump like five years every season. You had more than enough time to let us know he was a bisexual. You gave us the impression. <laughs> for like for two years mm. that he was a hundred percent straight and loved this one girl. So then all of a sudden out of nowhere, when he kissed the dude on the episode, nobody was mad because he was a man kissing another man. We were more just like, where did this come from? Yeah. Like, well, when was that a thing? <laughs> like, it's just like a checklist for yeah, them. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Gay yeah. Yeah. That, just, that's, that's, that's Hollywood. Like you see it, you <laughs> see it in, uh, not, not going to go too deep, but yeah. you see it with emails. Like anyone who's press gets those press releases where they're just saying, Hey, and, and the way they market it is just like, mm-hmm. it's, 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 for me, it's insulting. Like, Hey, we got this black female director. <laughs> Would you like to talk to her? Can't she just be a director? Yeah. Like, like, Hey, like, like, put them on the playing field. Don't, like, for me, like, the whole identity politics thing is, like, I don't need, to, is the story good? Mm-hmm. Are they skilled? Tell me what they're here to talk about. I don't care if they're black, this, this. That's second to none. What is their product? Yeah, because That's how you market people. Yeah, because remember, when we did um, the Zane movie, yeah. the director that wrote that yeah. script they was need, white. Yeah. You know, like, and they didn't come to us like, hey, this white director yeah. is writing a Zane movie. No, they were like, this director did yeah. And we were like, okay, let's interview her. And, you know, I remember you were like, what the hell is Zane? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you, you was like, you really want to know what it is? Ask your mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, and I wasn't being like rude. I was yeah. like, ask any woman over a certain age because they picked up those books yep. on the street. And, that, and first of all, shout out to Zane had a market. Wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Zane had a market. There wasn't a bookstore. Zane's mm-hmm. books were the dude standing on the corner with the with the table. That was <laughs> yeah. like that was like yeah, Jamaica the, Avenue on yeah, the block. The, the, he was the dude on the block. Like yo, I got that new Zane book, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and and you saw women coming out after work. Like you got this week, and and they would pick. Shout out to that because that is marketing you cannot buy. The streets, like the yeah. street marketing, <laughs> like and then she became a household name. Like mm-hmm. off of not from a bet she became a bestseller on the street before she became a bestseller. Can we say her and book a, belonged to the streets? Yeah, her book belonged, belonged to, to the, the streets. streets. You know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> it was for the streets. And it, and that's how it grew. In the sheets. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 to sit down and I mean I could be wrong. I'm not I don't know the entire history mm-hmm. of Zane's books, but I just remember that a marketing. lot of her books being yeah. like really popular with the like the sidewalk street vendors. And then I remember mm-hmm. Every woman talked about like they would be on the train. Yo, did you read that Zane book? Did you read this? Mm-hmm. Did you read that? And I mean, it, it. I could have this backwards. She could have been in the stores and been really popular in the stores. And it's just that the people just, bought it just, out. Just, but let me tell you something. When I knew about Zane, it was in the streets and yeah. people mm-hmm. were talking about it like it was like it was the number one bestseller in the world. Yeah. You know. So, but you know. Hollywood does do that. The one yeah. time I don't think they did this when Nadi was talking about Marvel with the Asian Iron Man, when they did it with Riri, they didn't do yeah, Riri. They didn't do Ironheart. Yeah, they didn't but do Ironheart. Yeah, they didn't do Ironheart. Ironheart like she was just new. They did it as she was a college student who admired Iron Man and she decided to replicate his suit, and he was so impressed by what she had done, and he was ready to step down for a little while that he said. <laughs> You don't have to worry about uh, building your scrap parts. Yeah. Here, Here's my lab. It's yeah. all been turned over to you. Be a hero. And it's what, it's, mm-hmm. that, I think, is yeah, that's, genuine. Yeah, that's smart. That's yeah. smart. That's how you introduce characters. You introduce them to the into the world. You just don't swamp because, like, now he's like, that's lazy. As Deadpool will say, that's lazy writing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, perfect, perfect, perfect example. Um, James Bond. I yes. remember a few years ago, people were petitioning to get a female. James Bond. And I yes. was like, excuse my language, F you. Um, James Bond is a womanizer. He's a playboy. 
that's his story. That's what was written. That's what he is. He's a male that mm -hmm. loves females. And as a female, it does not bother me. Like yeah. that's, that's who it's, he is. It's yeah. his character. It's and I'm like, Jane Bond. <laughs> they, yeah, they wanted a female. And I was like, there's so many badass female movie characters out there. Like, yeah. Look at like mm -hmm. all the Angelina Jolie movies. There's, there's a lot of, um, badass female Xena. Like there's just so many. And I was like, just, just leave it be as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but the way they're doing the new one with like another character in the 007 verse, yeah. that's what works. Mm -hmm. and, and they're gonna, um, I, I, I've heard they're gonna neuter him. So <laughs> if you if you expecting him to be the womanizer, they, they, <laughs> this is a Me Too James Bond era. Yeah. So get ready for James to be like respectable, very respectable, <laughs> and be like he's gonna be holding doors but open. But even with that. Um, in this case, Idris Elba would have been the perfect James Bond. That's a situation where you could have changed um, yeah. who he is because he's also British. Yeah, yeah. And James Bond is the code name. It's not his act. It's, like, it's not the person's yeah, exactly. actual name. Like, oh no, I think actually in the books that is his name. Oh, that is his, uh, is his name. No, no is it Bond? Well, the Bond is Bond is the code name. Mm -hmm. um, he embodies well, the, the Bond he, image. He, yeah, yeah. Name. James is his name though. Yeah. But they just stuck it with James Bond. Right. Yeah. But Nadia, let me ask you a question: If you had a female James Bond. That was like a man, like a man. I don't want to say manizer, but a <laughs> woman who went in there and just like dropped, like seduced men and then dropped them. And made, and yeah, and made them sit there like they're they're sitting on it. Like after she gets up and she leaves, they're like holding a glass and looking at the nice things. But I, but I love you, and <laughs> and she just walks off. She's like, you know, like. Now nah, you can't be a sucker for love. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you, gotta, you know, say you gotta chin up, and then she just walks out and leaves him there, like in tears, like, and then she's badass, and then like, she's like, you know, because I know there's a lot of people who go, oh, then she's just a hoe. No, but what if she was doing the same thing that James Bond did, like making men fall in love and being just that smooth, and like ordering her drinks, like. Uh, you know, or like I want my martini smooth, <laughs> like <laughs> shaking and not stir. Yeah, shaking, not stir. And then like she's just like she's just all around like just. I mean, I mean, if fire. She's, if, like, if she's British, yeah. that shit might fucking work. You know, like <laughs> and she's and she's just extremely hot, and she's yeah. just like all the men want her, and all the women want to be like her, and she's and she knows how to use a weapon, like. And she's a badass fighter. I mean, I understand See, exactly what you say. Yeah, because to her point. No, that was just an example, yeah, but yeah. that sounds like a badass movie. I would watch that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can, you, In the universe. Yeah, but you can, you can do it. Yeah, because like, you can do a movie like that. I mean, that, they could have done she it. She doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a James Bond well, movie. Well, they could have did it, yeah. but they yeah. didn't do it with Jinx, with Halle Berry. They was going to do it That's with true. the spin. They was going to do the oh, Jinx yeah. spinoff with Halle Berry, but they, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a movie head people. So, um, <laughs> Um, yeah, they were going to do it with Jinx, but I guess the deal didn't fall through, and that was supposed to be the spin. Oh, no, you know what happened? I think it's because, I, was that the worst received James Bond to date? I think it was out oh, of that. Man. I'm not sure. I think I think that was the worst received one. I think that's why they didn't do it. Um, that's the first but, one I ever watched. Oh, well, that one with Halle Berry? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, that uh, was uh, Brosnan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a James yeah. Bond head. I watched uh, every single Bond movie. I watched movie, it because so. I was like, oh, we got black people now. <laughs> <laughs> I watched every Bond movie. But um, just to before we run out of time, yeah. I want to highlight the person, my character that's actually from a comic strip. So mm -hmm. my favorite black character is Huey Freeman from <laughs> <My> Boom <character>. Dots. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking love this show. Yeah, this, don't worry about time. We still got two other people I, I, to yeah. get through. <laughs> I, I, it's like the black anime. I mean, this is what <laughs> it, it really is because it, it's, I, I love I, what I love about the Boondocks is that it's so real. It doesn't hold back. It's raw. It, it's raw. And it, it does call us out on our shit too. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not, yeah. it's not just going to be, they're not going to call out everything that black people have to go through. They're going to call out shit that we do too. Like yeah. I would never think like, I seen like, you know how the, they do the Simpsons predicts um, mm -hmm. stuff. Boondocks predict shit. And then this shit happens Hell to yeah. black people. Yeah. The, the chicken episode when they went, <laughs> In that scene, yo, facts. That's what I'm gonna say, and, yo. Yo, when that scene happened, when that lady was just like, "How am I gonna feed my babies now?" Y'all knew this chicken was gonna be here for a year, and then that shit actually happened with Popeyes. I was just like, "Boondocks predicted what? this shit." <laughs> yeah, they, they did an episode where um, they had like this new chicken, and it had this secret sauce. 
So they had a whole bunch of black people, and they, you know, they ran out of the chicken. So black people started walling out. Does that sound familiar, y'all people? So they started walling out, and then they got this lady on the news crying. And she was just like, I can't believe they ran out of chicken when they knew this promotion was going to happen a year ago. My baby needs chicken. How am I going to feed my family now? And then you go on the news and you see people literally saying the same shit. It was so surreal. I was just like, wow. And not to mention the R. Kelly episode. I mean, oh, there I was going to bring that one up too. First of all, you cannot bring out the pod pipe of R and B like without <laughs> without sitting in the fact that that that's shit ex- and the people the people fighting for him too. Yes, that was, that's like, exactly yeah. how people are. I mean, yep. like, but but I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I will have to give Riley props yes. on what he said. He was like, now if you stand in somewhere and somebody pulls out their thing and they gonna pee on you. Are you going to sit there or you going to move? Yeah. Like, and, and I was just like, you know what? He makes an excellent point. Like, yeah. if somebody gets ready to pee on you, and, you know, not to bring it up in the tabloids, uh, Trey Songs is not going through that now. Yeah. And Wait, Trey what? Trey Songs is going through that right now. What? Um, he, 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 Apparently, he, peed, he, he peed on his He be peeing life. on people. Yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah. Wolf. What? You know what? what? I will Kelly shit, right? Yeah, I will send you the clip of the Don't note. ruin my my Don't ruin it. I will send you the clip from my the no childhood note. love. Yeah, wow. I will send you the clip from the no jumper thing. Apparently oh, We do not Trace freak shame here on the tacos nah, dot com, by the way, folks. I'm not gonna freak shame him, but apparently <laughs> Trey Songs has an issue with not it's not just peeing on women, it's he has an issue with like Going all day doing the doing the dirty deed like he's he he doesn't stop at like he goes from six a.m. to six a.m. Apparently, <laughs> like so you know props to Trey Songs for doing that, but you ain't got to pee on nobody after yeah. whatever you eating, bro. Oh I need to know what that is. Yeah, right. yeah. As long as it, as long as they were um. What do you call it? Not underage. Yeah. No, 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 no. They were of okay. age, but it was just one of those where he sat down and she was just like. What's next? I, I, like, I, I, I had to say this. I'll give him credit. That man lives everything he put in them songs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but definitely Boondocks. Um, if you oh, haven't yeah. watched it, if you don't have I, I like HBO, the itis episode, it, I got all them on DVD. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, the itis episode was so Doug wild. Doug Nificent oh my is my God. one of my favorite characters yeah. on that show. I Doug Nificent is hilarious. Cars in my driveway. The, the, uh, <laughs> the f you granddad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh no! Do that, the homie. Yeah, yep. do the homie. <laughs> that I, was. I feel like it was so ahead of its time. It really was. Because if you rewatch a lot of it now, so much is relevant. Like it's insane. Oh, yeah. And it just and, and I love and it's not just all comedy. It's, I mean, it's a lot of social comedy, but. When they get serious, they do get oh, serious. serious, and they and they, huh? and they use Huey, yeah. and, that, and yeah. that's the reason I'm pinging back to why Huey is my character. Huey sees things similar to the way that I, that I see it, that I, I see things too. That's why I, I could relate to Huey a lot. Like Huey, Huey is more Malcolm, but at the same time, he can be Martin too. Like Huey mm-hmm. sees things, like he will call you out on it. I, I, I would never, um, Gangstalicious, when Gangstalicious yes. got shot and Riley was just like, this is a tragedy. She's like, tragedy is just too, it's beefing. It's like, <laughs> yeah, what are right. you talking about? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? They also brought a serious aspect with Riley. Yeah. You remember the Bob Ross episode? Yeah. That that episode touched the hell out of me, it, boy. And it like, touched Grandpa, too, because yeah. he, I think, he he painted, he painted his, his wife, his wife, and or, grandpa, or, oh yeah, or his yeah. parents. Yeah, he painted he painted granddad, grandpa, yeah, granddad yeah. and his wife. And I mean that episode because I don't know anybody who didn't watch Bob Ross. I don't know anybody who Neither. sat down and didn't. I mean, Jarrell got this look on his face. Like, <laughs> I don't hold, know hold, on. About, hold on, who's well, remind who, who's Bob Ross? Okay, I, I, well, I, probably, I probably know him, but don't know. But okay, don't know. This man. is like the second time to say this, man. You, like, you might have to get out. <laughs> you, to get, you might have to leave this way. Like this is this is like. I mean, you're right next to the door. We're gonna have to ask you to use it, like, because if I have to explain who Bob, Bob Ross, Ross is, that you, you hurt my soul right now. <laughs> like, no, no, no. You be, you're not being serious, right? You know who Bob Ross is, right? The, you know the the, the, the guy with the beat the devil out of it. The guy with the big afro and painted. On um, he's to be on PBS. PBS. 
TBS. Yes. Or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Now, but like I said, I, I I probably know him. I just don't know his name because I'm good what? with faces, bad with names. But I, I used to watch him on PBS because he he always had like this weird like calming voice, like he was trying to like hypnotize you. <laughs> Listen here, brother. But he, but he did. <laughs> from, yeah, from, he did. From one brother to another. Bob Ross's household everywhere. Yeah. No. Yeah. I just I just didn't know his name. You know what's funny? I went to an art fair, and he, one of his paintings were up there, mm-hmm. and. I was too young to like, not young, but I was too broke. <laughs> and he was at an art fair. And I was just like, I had like 12 bucks in my pocket. And I just went because a friend of mine was like, yo, come to me. I'm looking, come with me. I just want to look at some of this art. And I saw Bob Ross and they wanted like $45 for the painting. And I swear I was about to go out there like, yo, look, somebody give me like 20 bucks here and there <laughs> so I can get a Bob Ross original. <laughs> like, for real. Like, and I mean, what? I'm pretty sure you can find some of his paintings out there, but Bob Ross was an inspiration to a lot of people. Bob and Ross is the truth. He was. And I have to thank <laughs> PBS for introducing us to this man because he was an inspiration for a lot of people. People was like, yeah, I really love Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> if you, first of all, anybody who did not love Bob Ross, you just didn't watch. I can understand somebody under the age of like 25. I mean, for me, I'm a PBS kid. So yeah. I grew up with Bob Ross, learned to read. Um, Wishbone, Ghost Rider, Shining Time Station. Where in the world oh is my Carmen? God, Ghost Rider. Yeah, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? So that's that's Don't be my. Afraid of the dark. Yep. Yeah. 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 Reading, reading Rainbow. <laughs> reading Rainbow, but I also love the DMX version. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> no, no offense, but I always wanted to say to these people like. How the fuck can't you find this woman? <laughs> like and the, the, the technology was there, and like and she keeps escaping. Like the CIA can oh, find. I a, yeah, I was like the CIA can find El Chapo like, <laughs> like, <laughs> under a brain somewhere. Like the woman has a big red coat and hat on. What's wrong yeah, with yeah, you people? Right. I, I, I I always wanted to be on that show. I was, used to watch. I'm like, I want to be on the show. See, then I realized you had to know all these facts and yeah, shit. Yeah, it was, it was like, oh, that's too much. That's too I was much. like, wait, I got to study? Yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm good. Let me just be on Double Dare. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go into, you know what? I'm going to let Nadia go first. Who was your favorite and inspirational character? Who, whoever it is, cartoon, anime, comic book, TV, you know, made up. I don't <laughs> you know. Shit, that's that's too broad. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be um, comic. Doesn't have to be comic. It could be anybody. Um, inspiration. Yeah, any, anybody, anybody who you you really loved, you really loved, like. Shit, come damn. <laughs> you, uh, so we'll give her more time, Sean. You yeah, can, you okay. can go. So. I had a like I said I had a few uh, comic book characters that I was really into. I'm not gonna like a lot of people be like, oh my god, you like you liked Black Panther. Actually, to be honest with you, Black Panther was not my favorite comic book character growing up. I and I will say it was more along the lines of my favorite black comic book character that I resonated with was Spawn. Mm. Okay. Wait, are we? Because I would have said that. I thought we were doing like humans too. Oh, I mean, it's anyway. I mean, Spawn was human, like, <laughs> but it was it, it was Spawn only because he was the first, like at the time, the first like mainstream black. Like nobody knew he was black. If, if you didn't read the comic books, and even I didn't, if you didn't read the comic books, you didn't know he was black. You didn't know Al Simmons was. You knew there were like a lot of black characters in there, but you didn't know he himself. If you read like when I first started reading the comic books, I read it like issue nine mm-hmm. and I had to go back to issue one. And then that's what really got me into a lot of Todd McFarlane's work, even though I had been looking at Todd McFarlane's stuff like when he did Spider-Man, like one of my favorite all time comic books that he ever did was Spider-Man Torment. Mm. OK, and his art and storyline was just crazy. But when he did Spawn and I sat back and I read and I actually got to go back and read the first comic and I got to read what it was about. And I mean, the kind first of all, I followed the comic. I watched the animated series. Mm-hmm. I when Spawn went out, I read um, when they bought Spawn back. There's a big, huge Spawn story arc where it's about heaven and hell and him resetting the earth. I've I've gone through everything. And I was just like, okay, this is my character. Because although I love the, the, the uh, what a traditional character, 
where he's been tormented, maybe he mm. lost a family member, maybe he wants to fight injustices. This man wanted, he fought for love. Although, <laughs> although I'm going to take this back, later I find out he didn't fight for love. That Al Simmons was not the man that I thought he was. And he wasn't the man that he was portrayed in the beginning of the comic book. See, and this is why I love it even more because he was a complicated man later. And I'll leave that up to anybody who wants to go read um, any of the small comics, especially the recent ones, to find out Al Simmons' full story. But I will say, to this day, that is still my favorite character. And I want to shout out Tom McFarlane, who I met at Toy Fair. Mm. All right. And actually took the time to sit down. And that's another thing I want to say. As an artist, if you sit down and take the time to talk to your fans yeah. and listen to them mm-hmm. and listen to what they have to say, shout yeah. out to you because some people just look at their stuff and go, oh, whatever. I mean, he took the time to sit down and talk to me about because one of the things that started it was somebody had made a Spawn fan made movie that yeah. was really good. And I told him, I look forward to whatever you're going to make. Yeah. Because you, I know you're gonna blow this out of the out of the water. And I followed him on Instagram as he wrote the pages. And I'm hoping that the, the new Spawn movie with Jamie yeah, Fox, yeah, and it's supposed to be by Bloomhouse. Yeah, I'm hoping that comes out soon. If if this is anything that could reach Todd McFarlane uh, to say, I hope that that is still a thing happening. I hope that COVID is only delayed it, and I hope that this is coming out soon. Because although I liked the first Spawn movie, I was just like. It was kind of kiddish. Yeah. But I'm hoping he puts that dark. Something similar to the anime series. Yeah. First of all, the anime series. If you've 